The DCU is picking up steam and I am all in. Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. Thanks for joining me today. If you are excited for the new DCU, hit that subscribe button because we're going to be talking about it all the time on this channel, including reviews after every episode of Creature Commandos and all the way leading up to Superman in July. We're hoping to hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We have about 60 some odd to go. Thank you all so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. All right, let's get into it. The news of the day is that a Clayface movie is going to be in production and will start shooting in 2025, spring 2025, according to scooper extraordinaire Daniel RPK. That's right, Mike Flanagan, who was rumored to be doing the Clayface movie, I think about a year or so ago, has completed the script and production is going to move along. If you remember, James Gunn said that story is key, right? Everything in the DCU is dependent on story. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. The director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. If they have a good story, they'll make the movie. They don't have, I mean, they have a plan, but little things can be changed within that plan to coincide with great story ideas that great filmmakers will present to them. And Mike Flanagan is not a half bad filmmaker in his own right. Obviously, Netflix is The Haunting of Hill House, Floy Manor. And if you haven't seen Hush, you got to check out his movie Hush. It is fantastic. You'll see there he also is a writer of Dr. Sleep. He has a great filmography, you know, and really been over the last few years, especially with his Netflix stuff, really made a name for himself. Midnight Mass just happened well, like last year and now it exploded. Everything he touched on Netflix turned to gold and you would hope the same for DCU and now with Clayface. And I love the idea of using Clayface because Clayface is a villain who most fans know of but isn't as mainstream as Joker, Penguin, Riddler, or Catwoman, obviously. But he's right there, right? He's in the forefront. And he has a really rich history dating all the way back to Detective Comics number 40 in June 1940, created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. In that, though, he wasn't the version that I think most people associate with Clayface today, the clay monster, if you will. The original Clayface was just basically a psycho killer. And that version was highlighted effectively, and I think in a great way, in the Batman the Caped Crusader animated series on Amazon Prime. I've been given a gift to match my talent. Side Akbar, the holidays are coming up. It's Black Friday time. And if you're looking for a gift for a loved one, a friend, or a family member, check out Limelight Co. Candles. They are organic, no paraffins, coconut soy. You can get molds, you can get different scents. Check out the website. And if you promo code Black Friday 10, you'll get 10% off your order. My guess is for the Mike Flanagan version, it's going to go more on the fantastical route. I think that's the point of the DCU. This isn't the Reeves verse Clayface. This is the DCU Clayface. And if you've been watching any of my Penguin videos, you know that I speculate that Eve Carlo was originally going to be Basil Carlo or a Clayface character, a Clayface version, but that got changed years ago. About two years ago, there was rumor that Clayface was going to be in the Penguin series. And I believe because of the DCU, they altered the character into Eve Carlo in Penguin. And if you remember, at the end of the series, she spoilers if you have not seen the Penguin series, at the end of that series, she kind of mimics and become Francis Penguin's mother in that moment, kind of emulating a little bit of what Clayface and who Clayface kind of is in that way. Very subtle homage, I would call it, to the character. Not exactly, but there was that rumor. And we know that they've also been talking in the whole Scarecrow thing that's been going on there as well. We don't really know what's going on. So I feel like there's an, uh, there was a time and place where in the Penguin series, Clayface was going to play a role in the Penguin show. But because of the DCU, they said, hey, how, what if you change this character? What if you alter this character? And they're making decisions because Matt Reeves and James Gunn are close. They work together. And I think they work really well together. And we're going to find out with that dynamic duo film that's coming out that looks just like it sounds completely wild and off the rails. And I think it's going to be a great time. Uh, but they're co-producing that film together. So there's no animosity there. This isn't like Todd Phillips' Joker 2 with, with James Gunn where he wanted nothing to do with them. Matt Reeves, I think, is very... Uh, receptive of what he hears from James Gunn and Peter Safran. I think he's willing to collaborate as well. And I think altering certain characters that don't necessarily need to even be who they are they're to their comic counterparts, I think that's something that Matt Reeves is willing to, to work into his ultra-realistic approach to the Batman and the Batman universe. You put this news alongside the Sergeant Rock Daniel Craig news that came out a couple days ago, and this is actually really exciting because what this means is they're not... DCU isn't 
going for you know superman batman wonder woman flash like those characters right off the bat we've had those characters they didn't quite work for a lot of audiences now obviously the new versions will be quite different from what we got but they didn't resonate with people and people might be a little bit uh you know not willing to go right back to them obviously we're getting superman right away but he is the crown jewel of dc i mean batman you could argue is but batman's got the reeves verse so there's no immediate rush to put batman on the screen in the dcu when you have that going for you so superman obviously makes the most sense to do so but that being said with clayface with sergeant rock you have these b d list characters e list characters whatever further down the chain of popularity and you use them and you tell good stories and you let the audience know like hey we've got you covered these are just good stories you want to watch a good movie you're going to come to a dc studios film that's what they're laying out right now and that's what they want the audiences to know so whatever they have planned i believe 100 percent is going to work because they said right off the bat the story is key and these must be stories that people wanted to tell there must be something about them that they're going to do and clayface coming from mike flanagan you're going to give me a horrorish movie with clayface someone who can evolve and transform and manipulate their parts into becoming something that they're not i think that is going to be perfect and james gunn said that they're going to that the ratings aren't going to necessarily matter right you want to make an r-rated movie have the freedom to make an r-rated movie if you want to make a pg movie you do that and clayface r-rated clayface are you kidding me that is I, that just sounds like a wonderful idea you can really explore the character the psychology of someone who's going through this who's living through this we've never really had that on film in a superhero dynamic before i think this is like a perfect horror movie motif and this is something that they can really use and enhance and have the audience be like fearful of this guy like you think of the penguin show like i mentioned a little while ago and what they did to oz cobb and that you have a full-fledged movie about clayface doing this and then the dynamics going around him and whatever iteration of clayface they decide to do i think they're going to go with the clay monster idea i think that's where dcu wants to go with everything and i think that could be completely fascinating i think people will be horrified and distraught over that now how he becomes clayface we don't know we might not even get that in this because he's already probably going to most likely going to be clayface in creature commandos alan tudyk is playing him which would also make you believe that alan tudyk will be playing him in this movie as well because they said whoever voices a character in animation will play that character in live action so obviously alan tudyk will survive <laughs> creature commandos and proceed into his own film now whether or not he faces off against batman down the line will obviously remain to be seen and what part he plays in the overall story of the dcu also remains to be seen we know there's a deathstroke and bane movie in development we know that deathstroke was confirmed recently by james gunn to make an appearance in the dcu they have an idea for deathstroke so i love the fact that they're utilizing villains as well dc has the most interesting villains that you can think of with the greatest backstories and the greatest characteristics and utilizing those characters to propel your franchise forward i think is a genius way especially to bring in the heroes and be like look now you know the bad guys look up the heroes and again i gotta reiterate the penguin show was a perfect prime example of all of this you build up a villain that everybody falls in love with and then at the end you rip the their hearts out by making them what they are the villain the antagonist to the hero that you need to cheer for if you start giving us movies like that with these very interesting movies where we can start to feel for these characters for the villains make us see who they really are make what makes them tick and then at the last second rip our hearts out and be like man i need superman to get that guy i need batman flash Wonder, whatever to get them green arrow that i think is is just the key to success and i think the dcu is on the right path to success if they stick with this if, and but of course of course the caveat to all of this is the movies have to be good also if you haven't checked out holy christmas batman from my friend brian royer link in the description below it is a jolly good time let me know what you guys think in the comments down below thanks for watching everybody give us a like and a subscribe and until next time maybe the master of your own universe